Good morning, everybody out there in Facebook land. Oh. <laughs> oh. Breakfast. I am, I am here this morning with uh, a dear friend and co teacher, Heidi Love, and I am Paul Sterling, the author of Argue Less, Love More. And today you're here for a wild ride if you decide to join us. Um, we're going to talk about what does it take to create a remarkable relationship? What does it take to um, get the love you want and then keep that love alive? And this presentation, you want to grab a notebook, you want to grab a pen, pencil, something to take notes. This is not just a normal Facebook Live. It, well, hopefully this will change the way you look at, the re at relationships for the rest of your life. Um, we have spent immense amount of hours working on this and um, the presentation is going to be amazing and it's going to be awkward and clumsy at times because I'm not as great with the PowerPoints as I want to be. So we're going to be weaving that in there. So Heidi, you got up really early this morning because you're in Hawaii. Yes, aloha. 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 I'm Heidi Love. I'm so glad to be here with you, Paul. And yeah, we want you to be interacting with us. So definitely have your pen and paper. You'll be doing a lot of writing and you'll want to take notes and we want you interacting. And I'm wondering, Paul, if you can see the chat box because I'm on my end, not able to, I'm used to monitoring the chat box, but we want them, um, we want you involved with us and listening and it keeps the energy up and the more you are involved in the more you answer the questions the more you're going to get out of it so we're so excited we've both been doing this our combined experiences 45 years and we've put this together to make things you know to bring the invisible and make it visible and to make it more simple you know relationships are complicated and painful and it's not the good times that destroy relationships. It's how we handle the inevitable upsets that keeps you in them. Ha, ah, amen, sister. And you know, one of the things, let me just bring this first slide up. Um, but it says great relationships are not about safety, comfort, and ease. They are about, great relationships are about risk, vulnerability, and courage. You know, and it's not what we get from the sort of cosmopolitan uh, three tips, five tips, whatever it is. So many tips to um, create a great relationship. So here we go. We're on this grand adventure together. I'm going to expand the screen a little bit. And like Heidi said, what we're trying to do is give you the tips, tools and techniques to keep making love better and better. And by the way, just so that everybody knows, if you go to, and I'll put that up in a minute, but there's a place where you can get handouts so you can actually follow along with us, argueless.lovemore.net forward slash handout. And I'll put that in a banner in a second. So if you think about the beginning of a relationship, it's easy to win and hard to lose and you're grateful for each other and as we move forward what happens is we start to make it hard to win easy to lose and we take each other for granted so the idea here is to keep it alive so and people seem to think that just, i know when couples come to me they say oh, it's normal, you know, the spice goes away a little bit and you just deal with it and it doesn't have to be like it was in the beginning. And that's kind of a defeatist point of view, don't you think, Paul? Because I think with these skills, I've watched couples been married for 20 years and they fall in love again, just as if it was new. Yeah, and, and couples that have been together for six months and it's over because they burned out because they didn't have, the skills and that's the thing that we're going to be talking about three core things um but to give you a picture about uh well last spring i was in new york city with my partner and um we were at the subway and i am not a city person like i was brought up in the country lived in alaska 
went from 17 for the next 18 years. So um, anyway, subways, it was, it's complex and overwhelming. In fact, on the, on the subways, there is about 840 miles of tracks, 472 stations and 27 subway lines. What does this have to do with relationships? Well, to find my way around on the subway, I needed something. I needed a map. And what we want to do today is it's not a perfect map, but it's really after, how you said, 45 years of studying relationships, we've come up with a map. And it's going to act like a guide today. So that's what you're wanting to look at is the map. So Heidi, I, I've got a few pictures of how I got here, but maybe you could tell people how you got on this journey and I'll put up how they can find the uh, handouts. All right. <laughs> so I've always been fascinated with relationships. My relationships in my home growing up were contradictory. We learned one value system, but I saw a different thing. So it was very confusing to me. And um, between my parents, there were six, seven, eight, nine marriages between both my parents. So <laughs> they taught commitment and tell. <laughs> oh my God. I, I, you know, we've worked together a lot. I have never heard that stat before. That is amazing. Remarkable, right? <laughs> yeah, they, well, yeah, they were going to get it right. They were, they were working for it. They were, yeah. <laughs> So I was taught that it was till death do you part and the value of marriage and staying together, but I saw something completely different, obviously. And it always confused me. I was always fascinated. Like if you said this differently, if you showed up differently, why is it so hard to get along? And I was driven from a very young age to research, to read, to learn about relationships, and I've never stopped. So my experience comes from all the book study and research and all that kind of knowledge anybody would learn. And I have personally lived anything we're teaching you, both the painful part and the successful part. So I, I am teaching from a point of knowing what it feels like to be at the bottom and also knowing what it feels like to have the difference because I have the skills to navigate the deeper waters that I want. And I've never been a person that is satisfied in a comfort relationship. I want deep, connected, growing intimacy. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that, Heidi. And people, just so you know that you go to argueLessLoveMore.net, the banner at the bottom there, and click in handout. And you can get the handouts, which that way you can follow along with today. They're there and you can fill them out. You're going to get more out of today. And today, even though it's a Facebook Live, is designed more as an interactive webinar. So you can type your questions in. You can ask questions. Sometimes we don't get the questions right away. So if, if you're asking a question and we're not responding, most likely, it's not showing up because sometimes the comments don't show up till later for us. So um, I'll give a tiny bit about my history and how I got on this path. And, you know, one of my teachers once said that every master started out as a disaster. Um, <laughs> and so I definitely had the disaster right. But this is part of the reason I think I am a relationship coach. That's my dad and my mom in Maine in a boathouse. And I think I was might even have been conceived in that boathouse. And they adored each other, but they didn't have the skills to make love last. Um, and that's what we want to talk about today. And uh, incredibly, you know, if you've ever had a painful breakup, it's not because the love died. Um, if the love dies, then it's easy to have a breakup. I don't love you anymore. You don't love me. Over. What's painful is when you still love each other, but you can't get along. And that's what happened to my parents. After 18 years, they got a divorce. And 18 years, three sons. Um, I checked when I got a divorce. I called my mom. I asked her, how long were you married? 18 years. I said, wow, that's amazing. I was together 18 years with my ex-wife. Um, 
So if we don't change these patterns, they get duplicated. So I'm going to buzz through a couple other quick turning points. Ah, that's the point where you go, oh, that guy's cute. Had <laughs> the same amount of hair as I have now. Um, that was my older brother. And that's the age we got along. And I was, I'm the one on the left. And boy, did we stop getting along as teens. I got out of the house as quick as I could, became a commercial fisherman. So you can just see a commercial fisherman is really the good, good way to learn how to be a relationship coach. <laughs> so the quick transitions, I'm just going to give you, there's Robert Kiyosaki, one of my first teachers. He wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad. That's me in white there. And then I'm um, with Tony Robbins. I worked for Tony Robbins and he was a turning point for me, Heidi. So like in life, there's people, there's mentors and moments that are a turning point. And what I want today to be is a turning point for people to go, wow, it's possible. It's possible. Because like if Paul here with no background and, you know, I mean, not in my family. My family was not a, uh, a role model. They loved each other, but not a role model for getting along. And Heidi, you're saying the same thing. So what changed for both of us is finding mentors. Tony Robbins, that's Richard Bandler, Tony's teacher. Marshall Rosenberg, who I studied with, um, the creator of nonviolent communication. Byron Katie, I'm just giving you a tiny bit of my history. And that was my dad just before he passed on. Um, so it, full cycle. All right. So today we're talking about the gap from where you are right now and where you want to be in your relationship. Um, sometimes the gap is just a little bit. Sometimes the gap is huge. So what we want to do is give you the tools to bridge that gap. And I want you to think about in relationships, are you set up to win or set up to lose? And today we're going to dive into something that's your going to explain why most relationships and over 50% of the relationship fail because they're not trained. So here you go. Heidi, you want to talk a little bit about heart set and I'll keep, it will open those up. Yeah. So as you can see, there's three things and we're going to start with heart set and the heart set is really like, why are we here? Why are we even in relationship and what do we actually want? And there's three components that make up what we see remarkable relationships as and long lasting love. Like what actually has to happen so that you have the love that you I'm want. Gonna, I, I, it's going to take me a second, Heidi, with the slides to get back to exactly where you want to go. Um, That's all right. And like I said, at the, our disclaimer at the beginning is we've been working so hard on doing this that there are going to be some a few bumps in the technology. Okay. So here. So as he One more second. Him, there it is. <laughs> There you go. Now you're back on. Now I'm back on. So are we going to go around all three or the outside first? <laughs> We're just going to go for the heart set, these three, and then we'll move on to the next one. Yeah. So the three components of the heart set are friend, partner, and lover. And so if you think for a moment in relationship, why do you want a friendship in your relationship and what is it you want out of a friendship do you, you know friendship creates trust and someone that has your back and someone you can have fun with and you know friends if you think about the friends that you have rather than your partner there's a lot of acceptance and you can pretty much talk about anything so we want that kind of friendship in our intimate partnership and a lot of people are missing that because there becomes more judgment more expectation more let down and so really deepening a friendship and relationship keeps your heart open it's like they're my best friend and then there's the element of partnership. And for partnership, it looks different for everyone. You know, some people work together, some people live together, some, you know, how do you want a partner? And partner is really having someone that has your back. It's 
how do we partner in chores? How do we partner in finances? These are things that really tear couples apart because they don't know how to talk about them or they don't know how to take each other's needs and values and make a common goal and a vision. So partnerships about vision and future and goals. And then we have lover. And I like to call this, you know, when you're in a good heart set and you have friendship, partner and lover, you have a coupleship. <laughs> so in the lovership, it's like, do you have the romance you want? Do you have a healthy sex life? Do you have passion? Do you have attraction? What are you doing to keep those things up? A lot of couples that come to us, they're good friends and partners. And the love, the love and passion and spark dies down. And there's reasons for that. And a lot of it is around communication. So you really can have it all. And the more you have those three elements, the more your heart stays open. So I want you to think for a moment, where are you at now? Like with friendship, partner and lover. And we'll really go through this in detail later and help you look at exactly where you're out at now and where you want to be. Yeah. And. If you think about it, we were looking at mindset, you know, it's like, what mindset do you need to have a great relationship? What skill set? And then heart set is kind of our, our word that we kind of added to it, and made up a little bit. But if you think about it, what did you get your heart set on? And so what Heidi's talking about is, is key here. And if you look at what fills that, that whole circle up, that whole circle, is getting your, well, I'm, I'm actually going to change that. I'm going to make it a question. What is the only reason to be in a relationship? And I know that sounds a little bit um, arrogant that I know the only reason to be in a relationship, but I'm, I've been doing this a long time and I think I'm, it, I'm pretty right. So I'd love for you to just type in what do you think the only reason to be in a relationship is? And we'll get your answers. Some of them are going to show up now, and some of them might take a little bit to show up because I don't have that screen up. So, um, Heidi, what is the only reason to be in a relationship? Drum roll, please. Boom. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. It's to get your needs met. Whether we want to admit it or not, we stay in relationship when our needs are getting met and we leave them when our needs are not met for a certain period of time. And that's different for everyone, how long they can starve for, because not getting your needs met is really like starving. That's a perfect analogy. And the challenge is we live in a culture that is full of need shame, that yeah. people are, are ashamed of having needs and they don't even know how to talk about them. So part of working with our clients is helping them create a healthy, happy relationship with their needs. And today yeah. we're going to go through and we want you to challenge us, you know, go ahead and challenge away. If, if you think that it, there's another um, reason to be in a relationship. But so I want to say something I, about heart set before we move on and the friend, partner, lover. When you're dating someone, needs accidentally get met. And so do these three components. You're passionate. You're attracted. The lovership is good. You start doing a lot of recreation things together. You make time that you may not necessarily have just to be with the person because you can't wait to see them. And there starts to form a partnership. You know, you're interested in what they're doing at work. You're curious about what their life is. And so all of these three components get met early on. And that's why people fall in love. They're accidentally meeting each other's needs. They're filling these three categories. The heart opens and it's like, oh my God, I want this for the rest of my life. And then things go downhill because those things quit getting met because you don't understand the skill and the generosity and the idea of keeping that alive. Right. And so we're going to move into what are some of the needs now? If I was fancier, the needs would just show up one at a time. And the next time we do this, I would do that. <laughs> um, but there are 10 needs here. And we're going to buzz through them somewhat quickly to give you an overview. But this is your relationship needometer, your needometer. And what it is, is to let you know on a scale of 1 to 10, which needs are most important to you 
or your partner and how are you doing what's the satisfaction level so you can take this and at some point you can get the handout that i talked about and print that thing Uh oh, Paul froze, and I don't know if I'm frozen too, but I'm going to talk just in case because <laughs> I think it's his internet and not mine. So if you look at the needs, I'm thinking about my own relationship. Um, I have a top three needs, just like we would help you guys discover. So if you're looking at all 10 of these, these are definitely not all the needs in the world, but these are the 10 that we see the most in working with couples. And so if you think about the top needs, <clears throat> I want you to think about if I could only have one of these in relationship right now, and that's all that I could have, and it would make all the difference in the world with what I'm going through, that's your first priority top need. And then the second one, if I could only have two of these needs met in my relationship, and those would be the top two most important things, that's two. And then looking at number three, the same thing. If I could only have three of these, what would they be? And so I'm going to tell you a little analogy that everyone you're in relationship with in close relationship, whether it's your best friend, it's your marriage partner, it's your partner, it's your children, you have what's called an intimacy account. And it's just like a bank account. Every single thing you do, whether you're with them or not with them, is impacting that account. So it's either making a deposit, it's neutral, doesn't impact it at all, or it's making a withdrawal. And so you can start to look at your behavior and act into the relationship. Because when your relationship intimacy bank is full, you feel madly in love. And when it's empty, you feel out of love, frustrated, should I stay or should I go? And that's where the pain comes in. And so you can actually start this kind of game of generosity of is what I'm doing right now impacting my relationship with a deposit or is it impacting it with a withdrawal? And looking at the needs, you can get really clear on what exact actions meet my partner's needs, what exact actions or strategies meet my needs, and it gives a really good way to communicate about it. So some of the, I think we lost Paul, he'll be back on, something must happen with his internet. So looking at the needs, some of them, one of them is certainty and trust. And so I want to explain that everyone, so a need is never wrong. How we meet it is called a strategy. So a lot of times couples argue about strategies. It's like, you're not using a strategy that helps me. Or even in our own life, we want to meet a precious need. I'm going to use addiction as an analogy. So people use um, drugs or alcohol or something, and it's usually to meet a precious need to calm down, to have comfort, to feel good, to have joy. These are things that are precious and fine, but they're meeting it with a strategy that causes harm to them or others. So is what I'm doing in relationships supporting or is it sabotaging? So I want you to think along those lines today as we're talking, am I supporting my relationship or am I sabotaging my relationship with my behavior? So one of the needs is certainty and trust. And some people have a high need for this and their strategy is open, honest communication. Sometimes certainty and trust means we have common goals and vision and I know where I'm going. That creates a, a balance of security and certainty. And so you can start looking at what it is, what are the exact strategies that meet my need for certainty and trust? So I'd love for you guys to type in the chat box if you think certainty and trust is one of your needs and maybe what, what how do you interpret that? What does that mean for you? So there's another one, so certainty and trust, and there's another one that is um, significance and importance. Do you, know, you know, do you need to feel significant and important in the relationship and, and what that means to you? And there's also the three shades of intimacy. That's one of the needs. So the three shades of intimacy are physical, 
sexual and emotional. So some people have a really high need for emotional connection and some people have a high need for physical connection. And <clears throat> so you can start looking at that. And I wanna find the needs list so I can go through all these with you guys. There it is, there's the list. <laughs> So as he jumps back on, I'll let him know what we went through. But we were talking. So, Paul, I told him about the intimacy bank account. Yeah. And I started, yeah. So I started sharing about the difference of needs are always precious and never wrong. And the strategies we meet them with are either supporting or sabotaging the relationship. They're making a deposit. They're making a withdrawal. And I jumped into certainty and trust. And then I talked about significance and priority. So if you want to jump in there, I didn't go over any of the other needs yet, but I set them up with how to pick their top three. <laughs> yeah. And if we're not clear on what our needs are a lot of times we pick a strategy that almost guarantees you're not going to get it like mm -hmm. we have a young puppy and our puppy loves my beloved's son's girlfriend okay <laughs> son's girlfriend and he goes nuts and the way he behaves almost guarantees she wants nothing to do with him um and so a lot of times what happens is when we don't get clear on what the need is, we behave in a way that almost guarantees we're not gonna get that need met. So mm -hmm. the next one here is love and connection. And Heidi, thank you for holding things together. My computer froze and I'm like. <laughs> I didn't go over uncertainty and variety. I went certainty oh. and trust and significance and priority. <laughs> okay, so I'll just quickly touch on that. Because what we want you to do today is walk away with your top three needs that you can do like A, B, and C, and know your partner's top three needs. And so if we trust in certainty, it's like that creates predictability. But if every day of the week you cook the same meal, your partner would be a little bored with the predictability. So this is where you create adventure. So adventure in your life travel um although with us being locked down right now travel's not as op a big an option but still going for hikes doing something to add variety role playing if it's in the bedroom you know whatever it is to create some sense of variety so we have a need for trust we have a need for variety we have a need to be a priority um and what's odd is in this time of lockdown my partner hasn't been working and I've been working harder than ever. Um, and so I have to make sure to put aside some time to make sure that she feels like a priority and significant. And yeah. so that's a really important thing with our partners, with our kids, with our parents, with people that we love and care about, making sure they feel significant. So um, you want to add anything else to I was just thinking my top needs just to out myself are loving connection, significance and priority and certainty and trust. And I can look at my relationship and most of the time in my relationship, all three of those are met really well. And that's why I'm madly in love with my partner. And the most painful times, because we've gone through really painful times where it was like, oh my gosh, are we going to make it hanging on by a thread? The needs were not being met. And I'm sure I wasn't meeting his as well. And it's like, where, where did we pull away? Where did we quit meeting each other's needs? And now we're in a space of meeting each other's needs again. And again, I'm like, I won the relationship lottery. It's so amazing. This person is amazing. And it really can be this mathematical and basic. I mean, this is why we're giving you this map, because you can do exact things. You know what actions to take to create the love that you want. <clears throat> yeah. And so <clears throat> and the other one said that I know about Heidi is that growth and contribution are also priorities in her life, that those needs, and these are the top 10 needs in relationships. We're not trying to say these are the only needs. This is just like your training wheels. But if you get, if you're in a relationship where your top three needs are getting met at an eight, nine, and a 10, or even sevens and eights, 
yeah. you're in an amazing relationship and it's going to stick. Um, yeah. But when the relationship, you know, your top needs are down at threes and fours, it's you're in the warning zone. Yeah. So go ahead, Heidi, you were going to. Oh, so we have love and connection. And again, that looks different for everyone. And my love and connection kind of ties in. I cheat, you know, because we have, if you look down there, the three shades of intimacy, the emotional, physical, sexual. So I kind of, you know, cheat by tying that into love and connection because then I'm getting all those needs met. <laughs> so I, you got to be careful that what, what you just said, I cheat. <laughs> Could be screwed in there. That so people. This is not. This is about on the the list, not in life. It's like. So what I mean by that is, I'm really. I have a high value for time efficiency. And part of what I love about this system is when you know what your partner's needs are and what yours are, and you know what strategies equal that and you communicate that, you can really spend the time that you have in a very efficient way getting your partner's needs met, getting your needs met, where when we don't know, we have only so much time in the day and we might be missing half those hours doing something they don't care about at all. It might be neutral, but it's not making deposits, you know? Right, so it's like if you are cleaning the house and what your partner needs is sexual intimacy, you can go, but I, but I washed the, you know, the, the laundry and I cleaned the floors and I did everything. And it's like, how come you don't feel better? Well, because that need wasn't met. So it's really important to know which needs there are. So growth, if we're not growing, we're dying. And keeping the relationship alive and growing and going to workshops and going to seminars and reading books, it's like keep this thing alive. And making a contribution in the world. Like for Heidi today, you had to get up at like, I don't know, five o'clock in the morning or something to be able to be there in Hawaii yeah. and contribute. Then as far as intimacy goes, there's three levels, emotional, physical, and sexual. A lot of times we collapse those. And it's important to kind of separate them out. What do you need for your emotional intimacy physical touch and connection intimacy and sexual intimacy and the, the last one is attraction we're not we're just giving you the brief thing today so once again go to the handouts print it out and sit down with your partner and this is like a customer survey of the relationship yeah, and if this seems really fast and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm not getting this, we're definitely going to give you at the end of the call information on how you can get more of this if you're wanting it. So, you know, stay on with us and we'll get you all the information you need. And if you just have a piece of paper and a pen, just draw this picture right here. Friend, partner, lover, stop, start, skill. So if you think about it, what you want to look at is, out of today, even though it's just an introduction, what specific things are you getting? So what do you need to, if you want to have an amazing, remarkable relationship, what do you need to stop doing? Like there's some things that, you know, that we need to stop doing how we take our par partner for granted. We don't treat them like a friend They're, or we talk down to them or we communicate in a way that doesn't make them feel like a priority. We need to stop communicating those ways and we need to start learning to communicate better so that they feel heard understood and valued which is when we're talking that's what we all want so I want you guys to think about this before we go into the skill set we're going to share some skills with you and you're going to look at this but the way you want to look at this is kind of like in my relationship now what am i doing that's sabotaging it what do I need to do? What do I need to stop doing that's making intimacy bank withdrawals? What do I need to stop doing that's hurting, causing harm, sabotaging the relationship? So in a friendship that could look like um, I'm not accepting my partner because best friends really accept each other at a different level than most intimate partners do. And you can have that in your relationship. <clears throat> and then what is it that you think you need to start doing if you think about your relationship a year from now, and it's the relationship of your dreams, what actions do you need to start doing to get there? And we're going to share with you some skills. And then once you have what you want to stop and what you want to start, 
we're going to look at what skill you need to get there. That's the gap. Like, what do I actually need to get from here to where I want to be? And what do I need to plug in there to fill that gap? And like Heidi was saying, it's um, if you start thinking about it like this, it's sabotaging or supporting you. And what we're trying to do is make the invisible visible. There's a whole, there's three different components we're talking about today. The heart set, the mindset, and the skill set. Because you don't create an amazing, remarkable relationship without tools and training. Um, it's a, it's really key. So here we go. We're going to move on to the next thing. And by the way, let us know what insights you got. Oh. This yeah, is so get that written down. Get that chart written down. And as we're going through this talk today, start thinking about what do I need to stop? What do I need to start? And what skill do I need to bridge that gap? And think along those lines. And we'll really take you through that so it'll become more and more clear as we go through the talk. And this is just a quick picture of what it looks like in a lot of relationships trying to get our needs met. It feels like an arm wrestling match. Like there's not enough needs to go around and I've got to force my partner to meet my needs and she's trying to force me to meet her needs versus, you know, actually making it fun and easy. Ah, so we're going to dive into a little bit of the skill sets and what we're doing here is giving you a roadmap. Now, it doesn't have every detail in there, or it would be overwhelming. And this is going to be a different way of looking at the skill set than you've probably ever seen before. So there's, as you can guess, three components to this. We're going to give you tools on how to clear up the past. Um, because there's this thing that I that in the world of nutrition called bioavailability. And bioavailability is how much of of like a vitamin, say vitamin C or something, how much of the, the vitamin can our body absorb? And if it's done the wrong way or in the wrong sequence or the wrong combinations of foods, your body absorbs a lot less. So you're, it's less bioavailability. And what does that have to do with relationships? <laughs> well, it's something that we call relationship availability. Even though you're in a relationship, you may only be a tiny bit available because you haven't cleared up the past. You're still hurting from past relationships, past lovers. You got wounded and you haven't healed it. At one point, one of my friends, uh, I had gone through a breakup with, um, by the way, I've been married once, engaged four times. So I have gone through all sorts of stuff. You know, they say you teach what you need to learn. So relationships <laughs> are what I need to learn. And she asked me at one point, um, uh, my friend did after this breakup, do you know how to grieve? Have you ever been taught how to grieve? And I'm like, it was an alien thought. I went, no, no, I just basically fumbled through it. You know, I, 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 you know, we have this Hollywood way of grieving. So if it's for the feminine, it's with ice cream, girlfriends and crying. If it's with guys, it's getting drunk, going to the bar and finding some stranger to make love to or have sex with probably more. You know, it's like, how do you get over it? First is actually, how do you learn from it and grow from it and be with your feelings? So number one is if you want to be available, we're going to give you skills on how to heal and clear up the past anything you want to add to the past yeah i have a i was just thinking of a client that i was working with and this is an example of how the past can affect the current and it happens to all of us whether we're conscious of it or not so they came to me <clears throat> and what they were fighting about was he left a towel on the floor and sh and this fight was huge. And you can hear like, oh, a towel on the floor, no big deal, right? But because of the veils of past pain, she had lived with 
someone who was a bit of a hoarder and she had a need for cleanliness in the house and order. It helped her really concentrate and be happy. And she lived with this man for many years and kept fighting for her value and need of cleanliness. And he was living in, I need to collect things and have, you know, whatever his part was. I didn't work with him. I didn't know him. So, but her pain was no matter what I ask for, I'm never going to live in a clean house. <clears throat> so when the towel ended up on the floor, she wasn't like, oh, there's a towel on the floor. Let me talk to my partner and let him know my need for things being picked up. She was like, oh, my God, I'm going to live for 10 years again in a dirty house and nobody respects me and nobody loves me. And that means he doesn't love me. So you can see how veils of past pain can really affect a current relationship. So they need to be healed so that you're current with the towel on the floor. Right. And and. I had such a perfect example. It's like if we just look at the towel, the towel doesn't, it, it's no big deal. In fact, this morning when I woke up, there was a towel on the deck outside that had been drugged out there by the puppy. But it's like <laughs> it's the meaning we make up around it. And, mm -hmm. and what happens is if our needs don't matter to our partner, we don't matter. Yeah. And so if you want somebody to, to, to matter, you need to make their needs matter. Um, so we all get wounded. We all have past pains. The question is, um, do we get bitter or do we get better? And a lot of times what happens is people punish their current partner for the sins of past partners. Yeah. And so that is, and there's a whole set of skills around cleaning up the past. So, you know, but we got to look at where do you want to focus? Because um, when I went on Google, and I wish I had brought this up, I typed in diet, and there was like 19 billion, I think, different things about diet. When I typed in relationship advice, there was like, I don't know, I'm making it up, but 79 billion. There was like 10 times more stuff on relationship advice than even diets and diets are overwhelming and confusing. There's so many different things. So we're trying to simplify it and give you an area to focus. And then you learn these tools. So number one is cleaning up the past. Number two is connecting. Whoops. Let me back one up there. Connecting <laughs> and getting present, being able to be with one of the greatest aphrodisiacs that you can have is being present with each other. And one of the biggest challenges, especially for the masculine, is to be with the feminine when the feminine's in pain or upset or feelings are hurt or they're angry or they're sad. It's like, how do we be with somebody's pain without trying to fix them or fight with them or flee for them from them? And part of having good presence, and I'll give you guys this little tip so you can start checking in with yourself, is knowing that you're not acting from a veil of past pain. So if somebody does something, says something, and you immediately say, that means I'm not important, that means they don't respect me, that means this, then you know that you're probably coming from the past because being present is getting curious with your partner, not attaching a meaning to it without discussing it with them. You don't know what it means. Yeah, and and this is a set of skills that we learn. Like I have clients, I have clients that are literally rocket scientists, um, surgeons, attorneys, counselors, therapists. Um, we are not taught how to be in a relationship. And then we're also taught that you're not supposed to ask for help. But if you look at it almost everywhere in life, if you want to be good at something, um, if you want to be a good golfer, what do you do? You get a coach. If you want to be a good piano player, you learn. If you want to be a surgeon, you don't just make shit up. You, you study it. Um, I know it's really something that makes me so sad, Paul, about relationships, and I could get on a soapbox about it. I find that people, yeah, they'll go learn from a mentor, a teacher. They expect to. They want to learn the skills. They want to master something. They get help and support. And around relationships, there's this weird shame that comes up when you want to learn new things or you want to get support or have a coach. You think you're bad, and I just want to take that out of it. Like it's actually 
crazy that we aren't taught to do relationship better. And that if we want to master, most of us inside want to have intimacy. We're not wired to be alone. Some people want to be alone and it's fine. But most of us want to be in relationship of one sort or another. And why is it that we will learn how to master every other thing in life, our work, how to drive, but parenting and relationship, we think we should know how to do it. <laughs> and I was, I, I just want to tell you, there are three main reasons. I'm only going to cover one right now that we're working on the relationship or going to therapy or get coaching fails and why a lot of people have a bad taste in their mouth around it. And, and the number one reason is if you don't agree on the problem, you won't agree on the solution. And a lot of times what therapy looks like is that we're going to go in and we're going to figure out who's bad, stupid, and wrong. Who are we going to blame? And, and it's like, this is especially a masculine paradigm, but it's not solely a masculine paradigm. It's like thinking that I'm going to go to somebody, I'm going to pay them money, and they're going to gang up against me and let me know how bad, stupid, and wrong I am. So the whole idea of getting a coach sucks. But if you look at it a different way, this is not, so Heidi and I have put this together. So this is not about who to blame, but it's like, what tools do you need? Because if you're, if you're not getting your needs met, a lot of times it's how you're communicating and what tools do you need to clean up the past, to connect and get present and to do this third thing right here, which is to create possibilities for the future. And a lot of times you hear stuff about why he won't commit or why she won't commit. Well, a lot of times the reason people won't commit is because there's so much of the past in the current relationship, in the present, that the possibilities for the future seem really dim. It mm -hmm. doesn't seem like a good thing at all. So it reminds me, Paul, of the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. And that's what we often do in relationship. We like, try again, try it again. Let's talk about this again. Let's recycle this again. And you keep getting the same frustrated result. And so it really is that chart that we gave you guys. What do you need to stop doing? What's sabotaging? What do you need to start doing that's supporting? And what skill is the gap in between those? Yeah, so narrowing it down, again, heart set. Skill set, mindset, three areas to focus on to take this incredibly complex thing called relationships and simplify it. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at where are you now and where do you want to be? So at the top of this pyramid is great. Like relationship is remarkable. We're the best of friends. We are, um, we're great lovers. We're, partners we've got each other's backs or down here in we're in oh misspelling by the way i <laughs> oh, why limit yourself to one way to spell a word that's what i say so at the bottom is, is we're having a spelling crisis um, <laughs> so the relationships in crisis one or both of you are in the should i stay or should i go mode so we want you guys to be thinking about this. So as you're listening to it, type it in the chat box. Like, where are you now? Or really write it on your paper. Like, actually, where are you at now? And the thing also is you might not want to write it out there for the world to see if you're in the middle of crisis. But you can get a hold of Heidi or me. And what, we'll, what we do is we work with couples to help them go from where they are to where they want to go. And, trans. you know, what are the tools you need? And we do something called a relationship clarity session where you get clear and you sit with a coach and we do a survey in advance. You know, you answer quiz, you and your partner, so we can find out what's going on, what's causing the conflict and not blaming each other for it. And are you in, well, crisis, conflict, good, great, and in the center, for some reason, that's show, not showing up, but the center is stuck. If you're stuck and my computer is, there it goes, finally shows up, stuck. <laughs> so if you have ever flown anywhere, and like Heidi is in 
in Hawaii. Heidi, do you want your your pilot to find the island by luck or skill when they're oh, flying? Skill. <laughs> skill, please. <laughs> you know, it's like just think if you got on an airplane and the pilot said, you know, I think we're going to make it to Hawaii today. Um, I don't know. It depends on my mood. If, if I feel how am I feeling? And, you know, we might just fly by it and miss it completely. It's like, no, you want them to show up every time on the island. It's predictable. The more skills they have, the more predictable the result is. The more skills you have in relationships, the more predictable the result is. Um, so what are some of the skills? And I'm going to talk about one that that is important and then hand it to Heidi. But I was headed to teach one day in um, prison. So I taught for uh, eight and a half years. I would volunteer once a month. I'd go in for a couple of days in prison and I work with minimum to maximum security. And one day I'm driving and it's an hour, almost an hour and a half drive. And it was a piece of bacon stuck in my teeth. Now that's not a picture of me. That's just a picture that kind of <laughs> reflected it. So I got this piece of bacon stuck in my teeth and I'm trying. And it's like, you ever have this little thing that becomes more and more irritating. The more you focus on it, it's like at one minute you didn't even know it was there. And then it's like this really irritating thing and you can't let go. So then I got a business card out. I wedged the business card in between my teeth to get the bacon out. And um, it got wet and got wedged in there. And then it tore off. So now I have bacon and business cards stuck in between my teeth. And that got really irritating. So finally, I pull over and I grab one of these. That is a toothpick. And how long did it take with the toothpick? It took about five seconds at the most. Why is that important? Because people can be wrestling with issues and problems for years. And every time they try to work on it, it gets worse because they're using the wrong tools. And with the right tool, it can happen like sometimes just in a session or two sessions. And we've worked with people that have, there has been communication issues. There have been um, trust issues where there's been a betrayal or an affair or an upset. There, we've talked to people with healing wounds, um, intimacy issues all sorts of things. But when they have the right tool, things go a lot quicker. So before I bounce to the next slide, Heidi, is there anything you want to add to skill set there? Oh, I was just thinking about actually getting in touch with the pain of the problem, like not having the right skill set, like in your relationship right now, you know, how many things are going on? And do you lose sleep over it? How many hours a day are you obsessing on it? Do you think about it all the time? Is it impacting your work? Is it a distraction? I know for me, when I'm having pain in my relationship, my relationship is a huge priority for me. So it like consumes my life. I lose sleep. I'm thinking about it. I'll be like, uh, my my brain is foggy. I can't focus as much on work. And, and it's super painful. So I want you for a minute just to think about how much does it impact your life when you're having relationship problems? Yeah, my brain is, when I'm having a relationship problem, it's on rerun. Like, what could I have done different? What should they have done different? What, da, 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 da. Like, and it, it's like, ups, it's a little obsessive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So thank you for bringing, bringing that up. So I'm going to buzz quickly through this one. But when I went to learn... To surf, this is not a picture of me learning to surf, but but that's exactly what I did. The first thing I did is I I was in Kauai and I got an instructor and took a lesson. And it was a little embarrassing, you know, lying there on the beach because we did exactly that. Then learning how to paddle. And like I have been a professional skier, a hot dog skier. And here I was lying on the beach paddling in the sand. But it's like, if you want to learn something, start with the basics, you know, and if you want to ride the big waves, you need a mentor. Now, that is definitely not me. <laughs> this is me on my idea of a big wave. <laughs> but, 
but it's like learning these skills is something that's really important. So I'm going to actually even skip that whole thing right there. There we go. Ah, so these are the seven essential skills, because if you look at it, there are seven core problems that almost every relationship has. And the more important the, or the bigger the problem, the more important the skill is. So this is like having, um, if you can think of a carpenter analogy, these are your power tools. Yeah. So I want you guys to go back to that worksheet of friend, partner, lover, the stop, start and skill and start thinking about, you know, where's the pain in the relationship? What do I need to stop doing? What do I want to start doing? So in a year from now, I have the relationship of my dreams, a, a remarkable relationship, a long lasting relationship. And as we go through these skills, think, oh, is that the skill that I need that will bridge that gap in my friendship, in my partnership, in my lovership? So we'll start with compassionate communication. So is communication an issue in your relationship right now? Are you able to talk about almost anything and everything? As Heidi said way back in the beginning, what is a friend? A friend is someone you trust that you could talk about anything and everything with, and there's a level of acceptance. So is your communication more like who's wrong, who's bad, stupid, and wrong, or is it like, wow, when I communicate, I feel heard, understood, and valued, and we resolve issues rather than recycle issues? Yeah. So if you're in the pain of just feeling like, I, I mean, I'm working with clients right now, a beautiful couple, and one of them so desperately for so long has not felt heard that she's gotten louder and louder and more aggressive with her communication. And it's it's super frustrating. Like you can feel her frustration and anger for never being heard. So if you're in that resentment and anger and you feel like your partner never listens to you, you know that this is a problem. And the louder you get, oftentimes the further you push them away and the less likely they're going to hear you. So here's the huge kind of distinction on this. So I was in a relationship once and my partner says, I love you. And I go, yeah, I get that but I don't feel loved by you. And there's a huge difference between uh, when somebody says, I love you, that's about them. And if I say, I want you to feel loved by me, that's very different. So how does this apply in communication? It's like, if I say, I hear you, huh, that's about me versus I want you to feel heard by me. And I have to enter your world. Like Heidi was saying, if I, if, this person wants to feel heard. And what can I do to make my partner feel heard, understood, and valued? This is such an essential skill. That's why it's like number one on the list here. Um, I, I love that you brought it up that way, Paul, because it's so key. I'm just thinking of myself when I've had people say, I get it. I understand what you're saying. And it basically feels like, shut up. You're using way too many words. I'm over talking to you. And so that what you're proposing is that person on the other end is saying, I really want you to understand that I understand you. What do I need to communicate so that you get that I got it? And it's such a huge difference. Oh, my God. So glad right. you brought that up. You can tell that's a pain for me. <laughs> And for most people, it is. It, that's why it's number one. Most people do not understand how to listen so that the other person gets it, that you got it. Yeah, um, and un unfortunately today we can't teach you all those components of communication, but that is something Paul and I are well studied in, super passionate about and, and teach on. <laughs> And it's an ongoing process for us. Our relationships are a great training ground because there's days when my partner doesn't get it that I got it, or she, I don't get it that she got it. So it's, a, it's like going to the gym. So let's bounce to the next one, getting your needs met. Um, when you don't get your needs met, you don't feel like you're important. And if your needs don't matter to your partner, it feels like you don't matter. Um, and the challenge is we have a culture of need shame. So there's three levels, need shame. And what that means is that I feel broken for having needs. 
I shouldn't have these needs. If I was a healthy man, if I was a healthy woman, if I was a healthy person, I would be able to, I would be totally sovereign. I'd take care of my own needs and I wouldn't need anybody. The second level up is needs embarrassment. And with needs embarrassment, what happens is I want my partner to meet my needs, but I'm embarrassed about my needs. So uh, I can't ask. And if you don't meet my needs without me asking, you don't love me. You don't care about me. And then the last one is we embrace our needs. And so I am bouncing. I'm looking at the time. We're going to go a little bit late today, but let's bounce to the next one. You want to handle conflict resolution? Yeah. So conflict resolution, I think it's important what Paul brought up earlier like we see this often if couples don't agree on the problem you can't solve it and often that's where it gets unsolved right in the beginning is one person thinks it's a problem and the other person like no it's fine that's not a problem or they think the problem is something completely different so the first step in conflict resolution is flushing out the problem and agreeing on it because then a solution can be made and again we can't go through all the steps of conflict resolution today but there are steps and it has to do with communication and it's something that causes you know the veils of past pain and all the other things that we talked about cause conflict. And if you don't know how to healthfully resolve it, it recycles and it ends up, you know, being very painful. This is one of the key things for saving relationships because it's not the good times that destroy relationships. Yeah. If, if we don't know how to, and I'm mixing number seven with number three, if we don't know how to deal with our differences, difficulties, and decision, and we don't know how to resolve conflicts, it erodes our relationships. Yeah. And so number four, wounds and triggers. The more wounded we are, the more triggerable we are. We talked about it earlier. Um, we either get bitter or better. Number five, Heidi, you want to? Yeah, trust building. So a lot of us come into relationships with trust issues. And we're like, we don't trust you automatically. And it can erode the relationship. Fear makes people very dishonest. If you think of the times when you've been dishonest in your life, it's usually because fear is underneath. And it's usually because in the past you've had broken trust. And so trust building, there's actually skills to build trust. And one of them is making verbal agreements and keeping them with each other. And again, we'll go deep into that. We can't do it today, but we will. And part of what Heidi's talking about is that there is an upcoming all day workshop you can find out more information not all day but five hours argue less love more dot net forward slash course it's called the couples course and it really is about diving in and setting you up to win a lot of us have not been set up to win in relationships i'm going to bounce past this is a handout that you can download and it's your skill ometer Skillometer. Um, look at I'm what. I'm going to the blind real quick. I'm getting blinded by the light. <laughs> All right. And what you do is you look at what are the different skills that we just talked about. What, how important are they to you? And what's your how what your skill level is in them? So I'm just going to bounce to the the last one of these three. And we're trying to give you basically 45 years. I've been doing this 25 years. Heidi's been doing it 20 years. We're trying to compress the best, most important, most essential things that you need to create a remarkable relationship into, uh, at this point, an hour and probably 20 minutes. So we're zipping through it. But here is the mindset piece. And we'll be fast on this. But what are your habits? patterns and beliefs it's something we call the ROS your relationship operating system that's made up of your habits patterns and beliefs and this is what like in a computer the operating system that connects the hardware to the software that's your operating system so in your head there's something that connects the the hardware, your experience of life, your touch, your relationship to the software, which is your old beliefs and patterns and habits. Are they supporting you or are they sabotaging you? So 
anything you want to add to that? This is a quick explanation here. I'm just thinking of, you know, habits, patterns, and beliefs. Again, I want you guys to think along the lines of, is are your habits supporting the relationship or are they sabotaging the relationship? Yeah, and on a daily basis, it's like, are you are you taking care of yourself? I look at this. So, so okay, here's a habit. I ha I love coffee, but if I drink more than one cup a day, I get cranky. Now, so the habit is if if I don't take care of myself physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, I'm not much fun to be in a relationship with. So those are habits that that need that if I want to have a remarkable relationship, I have to have habits that move me in that direction. And yeah, so I love that you brought that up. Like there's kind of three things that Paul and I were fleshing out the other day with habits. One is habits of taking care of yourself so that you're actually available for the relationship. Two is uh, one habit that um, my partner and I have adopted is using daily gratitude and appreciation, like giving each other a daily appreciation and gratitude of what we're doing well, what we love about the person, and it goes a long way. And then another habit is creating daily rituals with people, you know, with your partner, because you know, when you're living alone, there's certain habits that wouldn't impact a relationship. But when you're living with somebody, those same habits might sabotage the relationship. So really looking at those. And then patterns, patterns are what habits, patterns and beliefs are all invisible until we learn how to see them. Patterns are just habits that are longer term, like every you know, patterns can show up six months of patterns of behavior. Oh, I'm going to be, there's a victim pattern. There's a perpetrator pattern. There's patterns in the way that we interact with each other and finding the patterns that actually support us and also eliminating the patterns that sabotage the relationship and the way of being. And the last one is, and there's ways of doing it is to kind of look at what beliefs is. And so here's a belief that is um, sabotaging. Life is happening to me. If there's something going on in the relationship you don't like, it's like I, I'm a victim here. I'm being punished. Life is happening to me or life is happening for me. And that's Some, okay. Go ahead. Sometimes looking at beliefs is looking at, we're almost looking for evidence to verify our past belief. And this mostly happens unconscious. But for instance, I have an old wound and trigger, if we go back to the seven skills, that I'm not important. So in relationship, not that I consciously do it, but because I teach this stuff, I'm more consciously aware than if I wasn't, if I didn't know these skills, because, and this is what learning these skills gives you. You can be aware of your own shit. Um, so, I have that I'm not important wound and trigger. And so looking for evidence, it's like when someone does something in a relationship, I'm like, oh, that means I'm not important. Oh, that means I'm not important. Oh, that's evidence I'm not important. And I'm totally sabotaging the relationship because if I check in with the person that's doing the thing, it doesn't mean anything about me being not important. And so it really affects things. And I wanna share one other little story that kind of ties together patterns and beliefs that can really damage a relationship. And this is why we talk about setting each other up to win. And I always use the term really learning each other because every person is different. Just like children are different, every partnership is different. And so when you can learn each other really well, you can navigate the relationship much differently. So we, my partner and I grew up in very different households. And for me, talking about stuff and fleshing things out and getting physical or, you know, philosophical and analyzing things was welcomed and it was good. And there wasn't a bad result from doing it. In his family, if conflict happened, there was mayhem and hurt and shutdown. So his past belief is if Heidi wants to talk to me, it means she's going to beat me over the head with a baseball bat. And I was so confused in the beginning being like, why is it so bad to talk? You know, so we had to really learn each other. And I had to learn to approach, and I'm still learning, to 
create a different reality in our current relationship that helps heal that past wound. So that talking is safe, it can be fun, conflict can get resolved, and it's a learning. You know, we have to learn each other. And I had to really alter how I show up, use less words. He also had to show up in a different way and it's uncomfortable, but it's worth it. Yeah. So we're, um, I'm not even gonna, I'm gonna zip past this, which is your ROS. I'm actually gonna look for the next slide. So Heidi, say something brilliant for a minute and we're <laughs> getting close to wrapping this up, but we wanna like give you the tools. We wanna set you up to win. So we have an invitation for you. So what he skipped past, we really go over. We talked about the couples course, which we're doing June 27th, and it's a five hour Zoom class. And you guys are on the video with us. It's private. It's not streamed live. It's just for you. And it's we really go deep into this so you can be learning these seven skills. I mean, obviously we didn't have time today to give you the skill of those things, but you're really taking a relationship inventory today. Like what do you need to stop doing? What do you need to start doing? And what's the skill to apply to get there? And so kind of looking at where are you at in relationship? So the we have something Paul invented something called the ROS. And if you think about your cell phone, it has an operating system and it determines everything that happens in relationship. And the story that I just shared with you was my operating system and my partner's operating system and they collided. So we had to look at that so that we could communicate better. So we really help you look at what are the habits, patterns and beliefs that are either sabotaging or creating success in your relationship. And you can start healing these things so you don't have to deal with it all the time. Uh, and then, and it's called the couples course. And you can find it at um, argue less, love more, dot net forward slash course. And what we did is this course would normally be something probably uh, between 600 and 900 dollars on and i've talked to so many couples that like can you do something special for us right now you know with the whole pandemic going on and everything and we decided to do it this is the last time we're doing it for this though it's for 97 dollars, and that is our gift for people to really enter the world and understand what's going on and what happens for the ninety-seven dollars, you get um, you get the course, which is five hours. You get the handouts, and you also get a free half an hour session with either Heidi or me to really look at how do you get the most out of the course. What are the issues that you need to work on? Is it your mindset? Is it your skill set? Is it your heart set? Which of those three areas do you need to focus on? And is it clearing up the past, connecting, getting present, creating possibilities for the future? It gives you a language. One of my um, instructors, a guy named Marshall Thurber, who, one of the smartest people I've ever met, um, said that, that mastery is the art of making finer and finer distinctions in a given field. And what we're trying to do is give you the ability to make distinctions in the field of relationships. So if you want just the course, it's $97. If you want the course and a Q&A session, which happens the next day, so you can go through the course, learn everything, get the distinctions, practice some of the principles and exercises. And then the next day we do a two hour Q and A to make sure that you can apply the course to your specific situation. Like, yeah, we do this because people go through the course and then you sleep on it and you're like, oh, I wish I would have asked this or I need to know what this means. And that's why we give the opportunity for the second two hours the very next day so that you can bring those questions to us and really look at what is it, you know, if you're looking at a problem in your relationship and then you're like, oh, which thing should I apply to this? That's what you bring to us. Yep. And then the last option is for people, you know, because for some people, the course is enough. Boom, I got it. I'm done. Other people want the course, the Q&A. And then there's a third group of people who go, okay, 
I want the course, I want the Q&A, and I want to know how do I apply this in my life? How do I get some coaching? How do I experience coaching? So this is sort of the sampler. Normally, if I did coaching um, before the pandemic, it's like 10 sessions, $1,997. I don't do single sessions. And this is, um, we decided we were going to do three sessions, which normally would be $600 for the three sessions. We're going to do three sessions plus the workshop, plus the Q&A for $497. This is for people who want to know, okay, I want to know about the tools. I want to do the Q&A and I want to apply it in my life. I want to figure out how to make my relationship more remarkable. Which do I need to work on? My heart set, my headset, or my skill set? And I find that in all of my work that I do with couples and families, I love to work with families too, that it's a combination because there's some therapists or coaches that only do one-on-one -on -one sessions and that's amazing. And it's a slow, gentle unfolding. And so I'm a person that when I want to do something, I want to learn it, I want to apply it, and I want it to happen fast. That's probably because I'm a recovered addict and I like it yesterday. <laughs> so I like the result now. But I find that when I work with people and I can give them a class or a talk or a lot of instruction and so they have the skills and then I get to work with them one-on-one, -on -one, the work is so much deeper and faster. Like it's quantum change. <laughs> and what Tony Robbins told me and he's told a lot of people it's like how do you turn decades into days like do you want to spend I, 25 years researching at the i i spent a full month in sweden with marshall rosenberg the creator of nonviolent communication it was an amazing month probably cost at least six thousand dollars but a lot of people don't have a month and marshall rosenberg's no longer even alive so we've taken all of these mentors tools and combine them together. The work I did with Tony and Byron Katie and Marshall Rosenberg and Marshall Thurber. And like, we've gotten the best together. Um, so and, Paul, <laughs> yes. I just got a text from one of my clients that jumped on to this and I've been working with her for years on different issues. And uh, she says, I listened to a lot of your live talk today. Effing incredible. You guys are so pro. Everything I think you guys say. Love the simple breakdown. It helps put things in a very much deeper perspective. Tom, on Saturday, I want to be there. <laughs> Thank you so much. And, and <laughs> if you've got questions, you can message either one of us. Um, and it's going to be an amazing, it's a life-changing event. And what I'd love to do is I, Heidi and I could spend the next two hours giving case study after case study after case study. I'm going to give you one example um, because even if your partner doesn't want to come, you can come anyway. Um, I actually have two examples of that that I've got time to talk about. One is a friend of mine from New York, from Staten Island. She, um, her relationship, they were together for 25 years. She said when she came to me, it was the last straw. It was like they were hanging on. They no longer were even, I think, spending their anniversaries together. They were basically reluctant roommates, um, but didn't know what to do. And he didn't want to do a lot of the coaching, so she did it. And it transformed their relationship. And the next year when they, they had their first anniversary together where they were looking forward to it in years. Um, another mm -hmm. friend of mine that was really a client of mine who's super smart, she was a principal for a school district down in Texas. And her husband had basically gotten to almost one word, one way conversation. He wouldn't talk he wouldn't open up and she said when she applied these tools at one point he just opened up and started talking for almost an hour she said the only reason he stopped talking is because she couldn't take anymore she had to like stop it but he had he, he said i've never talked to anybody like that because she learned how to listen so that he felt what heard understood and valued and she I wanna, was, okay yeah. 
I was just going to say, I might be speaking out of turn, but I think it is a big issue for couples. We have so many people say, well, I want to come, but my partner won't. And so we have lots of solo people of a couple come. We also have singles come that just want to learn this stuff so they have an amazing relationship. But I believe, and if this isn't true, tell me, Paul, but if you come and your partner won't come, you will get the recording of the session so that you can watch it with your partner later if they become willing down the road. And often they do. When they see you change, they get inspired like, huh, what's happening here? Yeah, so you go home and demonstrate it. Or you can, and Heidi brought up the thing, if you come as a single, you can say, get a hold of a friend and say, you know what, let's both go through this together as a, as a team. And you have a study buddy practice partner and you start building these skills. So yeah, and um, by the way, the $97 is whether you come by yourself or you come as a couple. So if you're a single and you bring a friend, it's one price. It's crazy, but just do it. <laughs> so um, I know I have a bunch more slides here. Uh, well, yeah, so this is sort of the big thing. You've heard us talk about it. You've heard about the mindset, the skill set, the heart set. You've heard about clearing up the past, connecting, getting present, creating possibilities for the future, how to create a friendship, partnership, lovership, Those maintain those three building blocks for your relationship, the seven core skills, how to transform the way you communicate. You've heard that there are options and tools out there. The question is, what are you going to do about it? And there's three options you really have. Number one is to do nothing, to decide that your issues aren't fixable or aren't worth working on and the relationship isn't worth investing in. And another way of saying it is, I'm not worth investing in. It's like when you're making an investment in your relationship, you're making an investment in yourself. Are you worth it? Do you deserve to have the relationship you want? Um. So number one, do nothing. Number two, do it yourself. Now, I was like Alaskan commercial fisherman. I was a do-it-yourselfer, and it cost me pretty much one divorce, four broken engagements. Like it took a long time for my wake-up call to happen and really get mentored and coached and have somebody supporting me and creating a breakthrough. So you can go create your own method, but it's a difference between following a trail or road or a path or bushwhacking and creating a trail. And the thing is trial and error. Um, it's painful when the trial and error is your relationship. Oops. <laughs> I just want to say about doing it yourself, you know, I was that way too. And I want to bring up again, the shame that people have around not knowing everything in relationship. And there's some weird shame around getting coaching or therapy or that kind of thing in relationship that there isn't when you're learning a computer system, when you're learning how to ride a bike. So I want to, any of you guys that watch sports and I don't, but I love this analogy that really good athletes pay the most and they have the best coaches, not because they suck at it, but because they want to be masters at it. And there's no shame. They're like proud. I'm the best coach. And it's like in relationship, there's no shame in wanting to learn better skills so that you can really master what it is you really want. So if you want to keep doing it yourself, I don't know, that's okay. Paul and I both lived in that for years and it's a lot of pain. I also did the do nothing because I tried a lot to get help and I got the wrong support and I was like, screw it, nothing's going to work. Or I'd read a book and then I'd try to apply it, doing it myself and it wouldn't work. So I had a lot of like, this isn't going to work. Why am I even going to bother again? And it's so, I think, you know, coming from people that have done that, Paul and I have developed something that actually is different and actually works because we got sick of having that happen too. <laughs> So the third option is to get a guide, um, learn a proven process, master their methods, and cut years off of the learning and avoid um, a lot of the heartbreaks that I went through, that my parents went through originally. I mean, when they got a divorce after 18 years of being together, it wasn't from a lack of love. It was because they didn't have the skill set. The problems got bigger and bigger. And they didn't know how to work through the problems. So there's several things you can do. The, the most powerful, quickest thing you can do 
come to the course. If you want personal one-on-one -on -one coaching, um, which is definitely we focus in on the exact things that you need, you can you can see if Heidi resonates with you, get coaching from Heidi. If I resonate with you, get coaching from me and get coached. Find a way, get a solution. Don't try to do this by yourself. It's like, in, it's it's ineffective. And I, I've tried to dance around it, but you know what? It's the same for me. I'm a coach. I've been doing this 25 years. If I get stuck, what do I do? I go to one of my mentors, one of my coaches. And, and I'll end on that. Like, I'm going to go back a, a slide if I can do this with grace. While you're going back on a slide, I just want to say that, like, in the tune of getting help, Paul and I don't do this because we needed to create work for ourselves. Paul and I do this because we've lived the pain of not getting the help we needed. And we created something that works because we needed it to work. So now we want to give it to you. Yeah. And thank you. And if you've got questions, you can message either one of us about it. Um, and I know that uh, there were a lot of comments that we didn't see. So it wasn't like we were ignoring them. But for some reason, my system is only showing me a small amount of the messages or the comments that I know are out there. So if you made us a personal comment or even a comment on the main sheet, we will try to get back to you, let you know how to do it. So I'm going to say thank you for being here. Um, if you want a personal copy of my book, you can get it on Amazon or um, there's a way that you can get it by just going to uh, take this survey, argueleslovemore.net forward slash ask. And if there's about seven or eight questions on there and it will help you get clear which of the communication, I mean, which of the seven skills do you need to work on. So, um, I want to thank Heidi for getting up early and working all of the work that went on behind the scenes to make this thing a reality here. And um, while I'm, I'm finding one last closing slide, Heidi. Yeah, I'm wondering, Paul, on the post on Facebook, do they have the StreamYard link? I don't know. Okay. I don't know either because I was going to say if anyone had questions, we could stay on after. But if you don't have that link, it's not possible. So definitely reach out to Paul or I. You can find us on Facebook or definitely the Argue Less, Love More um, website. Go and you find the contact information. And we're happy to answer any questions. And we'd love to really see you in the course June 27th, whether you're single, partnered. Bring your partner if you can. It's wonderful. And if you can't, show up by yourself for sure. And share this information out with people. And what I wanted to do is also let you know that Heidi and I are part of a bigger network. Um, these calls happen. This is one of the calls. And we, Heidi and I made it specific about the upcoming course. But every morning at 9 a.m. West Coast time, every evening at 6 p.m., um, there is a call. And this is the brainchild and heart child of a friend of mine, Scott Katamas, and him and Debbie Garcia, Debbie G from Spirituality Gone Wild got together and decided we wanted to make a difference. And we have been doing this for almost three months now. Every morning, every evening, one of us from either Love Coach Academy, Spirituality Gone Wild, or Argue Less, Love More is on these calls so that we can support you and find out more. I just want to make sure that you've got the Love Coach Academy link too. So yeah, they're called Compassion Talks. So it's free support seven days a week. Yeah. Yeah, and Heidi talks about Heidi runs some of them. I run some. I run a men's one on Thursday night. There is ones for um, relationship, for family, for being single, for recovery, for all these different issues. How do we stay connected, compassionate? Um, and communicating during these challenging times. So any closing statements, Heidi, from you? No, I just want to offer you an appreciation too. I know I do a lot of this with you and Paul is like the mad scientist of relationship and he spends every waking hour making things simple and putting it on documents. And you wouldn't believe the hours it takes to do this. 
stuff it's crazy we both have fun teaching and we love working with people but the stuff that he does behind the scenes so i just want to appreciate for all the time and hours and impact that it has on your relationship doing this stuff and the sacrifices you make and just how much fun i had today and i get all teary because it's a lot and we're both passionate about this that's why we do it yeah and um and uh, you know part of the reason like I think about it, so this is my closing closing statement, but you know, <laughs> the work that I did in prison for eight and a half years, I said it was it was a feminist issue in that, um, what, especially when I worked with the men in prison, I did it as a gift to the women because their wives, spouses, daughters, when the men didn't have good communication tools, the women suffered, the kids suffered because they were abusive. And it was, they didn't know how to express their pain and it often became violent. So um, to support the women, I gave the men better tools. So Heidi and I giving relationship skills, we support not only the people in the relationship, but the, the kids that are affected by the people in the relationships. and passing it forward from generations. I realized that when my parents didn't heal their patterns, I inherited them. And it's not their fault. They were doing the best they could with the tools they had. And by getting better tools, um, I've been able to work on a lot of my patterns and habits. And so if that's something that you wanna do, if you wanna make a difference for, this generation and generations to come and leave a legacy of love, learn how to be a better partner, a better lover, a better friend, and give yourselves the tools to clear up the past, connect and get present, create possibilities for the future and join us. Um, when is it? June 27th. June 27th, noon to five Pacific Standard Time. And, and that's uh, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Hawaii time for my Hawaiian. Yeah. <laughs> Hawaii fellows. <laughs> Invest in yourself. Like one of my mentors once told me, Alex Mendoza, and he said, you know, you, you can tell what's important to you by looking at your calendar and your credit card charges. What do you invest your time in? What do you invest your money in? Because a lot of people invest, and I, I'll be politically incorrect, a lot of lip service and say that um, relationships are important to them, but they don't invest any time in them and they don't invest any money in them and they expect that they're supposed to be great. So thank you, Heidi. Thank you everybody for listening. If you think someone will get something out of this, share this with them, give them the link. It's gonna be up, the recordings there. Um, thank ah. you for your time today, all of you that were listening and, we love you and help us leave a legacy of love. <laughs>